everybody, welcome back to the Crit House. I am Jeff Larson, and we are continuing with our Crit House critique group. And we have such an esteemed group of amazing photographers with us. Um, Ellen Friedlander, who has been a friend of the program for a long period of time, has been shown, shown, uh, shown her work in a previous episode. Ranville Carroll has shown his amazing work. Janae Leanne, and also with us here today is Nick Gervin, who's up in Portland, Maine. And now we're going to get the opportunity to be able to see a new project from the amazing Nina Welch Kling. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to this. And I, I don't think I've said this on the program, but it's it's such an honor to have you all with uh, with us here on this program. It really is. It's been a pleasure talking to you um, through this whole time. So, so thank you so much. So let's take a look at the work of Nina Welch Kling. Why don't you tell us about what we're seeing and a little bit about yourself? And so, uh, I was finishing up my project Duologues, which I've been working on for probably five, six years. And that is was, just and, and so everybody knows that's your book that has, right, has that's recently my been book published. That was just published. Um, and so in the second year of COVID, I felt like, oh, I really missed photographing people and I wasn't quite sure how to do it. And so I said, you know what, let me take a long lens. And it started out as kind of an experiment. It's like, how close can I get with my long lens and still have enough distance to have the six feet apart? But I ended up being closer and closer to people. Now, the idea is actually called Rolentando was kind of when you go out and I see people, nobody really gives a damn about me, my camera and how close I am. And people do not pay attention to each other. So it becomes this kind of blur of coming home at the end of the night of people being on their headphones and listening to their music or being on their phones, but nobody has a collection of what they had seen. They have no more visual um, recollection of, of their journey on the subway. And so I kind of wanted to create this Kind of straddling between expressionism and and realism and so they're all candid shots there's like this sense of sometimes that they're they're um shot in a um in a studio i pick these backgrounds and try to connect with people and it's become this really wonderful um experience being out on the street and um so the idea was to also, or maybe you can talk about, I mean, so there are the kind of straight up portraits and then there are these in-between sets of quick visual impressions. And I'd love to hear what you have to say. I mean, this is like a very small selection of this project. There is, I think there's two or 300 photos that I have. Yeah, well, I mean, Nina, it's it's uh, when you sent these across and I saw them for the first time. You sent only uh, the first thing I saw was just the groupings, um, without the individual images. And when I saw that, I was just knocked out by how how interesting it was how you've put them together. Um, you've created a story in each one, and there's a mood and a tone, but. Um, and then you sent the individual images as well, but that's that was just like my first old, just initial reaction. Um, I will open Thank up you. to the hive mind, the brilliance of the Crit House critique group to uh, give their thoughts. Who wants to jump in? I'd, I'd like to jump in. Um, first off, I think that's awesome that you're using a Zoom on the street because so many people are like, don't use a Zoom on the street. And I like that you're yeah. breaking that rule and throwing it away. I think that's great. Um, there have been a few people who have done it really well. Um, and, and I would say you're definitely one of them. Um, what I like the most is, yeah, this, it's this really kind of dreamy atmospheric yet, um, personal, um, kind of a project. Um, like we're, we're so close to some of these subjects. It's great. Um, I, the ones where you do the sequencing, like, um, uh, you sequence, I understand, I think it looks great the way it is, but I'm curious to what if you mixed the yellow backgrounds with the blue backgrounds or thought about, you know, um, some mixture, um, just out of curiosity. I do think it looks great as is with all, all the, the tones being the same, but I'm curious of what that would look like a little mixed up. Um, 
but I, I think this is really cool. And I think you're definitely, it's really well thought out and, um, you must have to like go find these locations ahead of time, right? With the, 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 the backdrop or, or are you just out seeing them? You know what? I kind of stumbled upon like how so often I always like to say that, you know, in order to start a new project, you kind of have to go out and just start shooting. And then I kind of stumbled upon this way of seeing people, which is so different from what I've done before, which is much more, um, black and white traditional street photography yeah and I kind of like like for example like the hair like when, when you know when when people just kind of brush by you sometimes mm -hmm. they're very close sometimes they're further apart but you just have these kind of fragments and it's like this kaleidoscopic kaleidoscopic cop okay can't say it um kaleidoscopic. you know sense of color that and so yes yeah, so I look for these um these backgrounds and then Along the way, I tried to find places where people actually had to look at me. Initially, it was kind of just this this brushing by and not seeing me. But then I wanted to really connect with people and kind of also capture that. And that became this 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 other location finding where I kind of corral them and they kind of glance at me and interact with me. And that became really important. Yeah, the but images I also where there's connection are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Right. So I also love the idea that in an odd way, every person I photographed became beautiful to me mm. in this very painterly yeah. way. So it didn't matter. It was male, female, race. It didn't matter. Everybody became was like um, set on this kind of pedestal in this very carefully um, photographed manner, almost like a portrait. And that wow. wasn't initially intended, but I felt like that it, it gave everybody kind of this gravitas on the street. I see that when you when you talk about it. Who's next mm -hmm. here on the Crit House Crit Group? Yeah, you know, as you're just talking, um, I'm in my mind thinking about like a documentation, but maybe better put a portrait of humanity is how I, I look at these images. Um, and I don't know. It's interesting because it also makes me think about like surveillance and like voyeurism, mm. but not in like a creepy way of any sorts. Um, but yeah, but just like a simple observation of, of, like you said, like these people of all sorts of different backgrounds and they lo look different and dress different and move different. Um, but you're documenting them in such a beautiful way that you know, sort of equalizes yeah. them in a way, but still allows them to exude their own personal nature. Uh, so I think there's a really good balance in in that. Um, and I think to Nick's point about like the color, I was also considering like how you can play more with like color harmony or color theory and thinking about that the psychology of color, um, whether that's intermingling the portraits together, um, you know, just to test it out to see or um, or if that's something that you're already considering as you're going out and looking for these locations or finding these locations. But um, I think all of those components is really are quite nice. I've done like a large um, grid of all of them as kind of on my website, which is kind of, but then, you know, it's the question is like, does it give away too much upfront? You know, so it doesn't mm -hmm. kind of reveal itself in a more slowly and a more, um, careful matter so that you know you kind of take in like I mean like for her like her I, I feel like it's kind of like this renaissance figure that mm -hmm. is walking on the street of New York and I mean none of them are cropped and they're really hardly you know in terms of color changing there's there's not um, so they're big files so I kind of see them really printed big and I don't know I mean I'm not quite sure how to present it yet I think that's mm -hmm. kind of where I'm stuck um, I, I think big could be nice, but I, I almost feel like maybe smaller too, um, just because they feel intimate to me, mm -hmm. you know, like, even though like you're standing at a distance and you're observing them, um, they, they have this level of intimacy that, I don't know, you know, where like for me, I, I don't know, I, I think conceptually the way no, I'm I love thinking to is hear like, that. Yeah. you're photographing from this 
distance, right, with this long lens. But then no, you I'm have to make really the viewer. Close. So the crazy thing oh, is, you are I'm close. about a foot away. I started with this long lens, and I thought I'm going oh. to be far away because it was COVID. But with this long lens, I am so on top of people. So gotcha. this is why I'm crafting. Like this is how this is photographed. Mm. Mm-hmm. this is not yeah. you know so it's, it's right. this this kind of it started as an idea of during covid to keep my distance and i went mm. closer and closer because that's just <laughs> yeah. how i shoot but people okay. still didn't gotcha. care yeah well i think with the long lens too when you're on the street people think you're looking far away and they don't yeah. think you're photographing yeah. up close so you can get away with something and also yeah mm-hmm. that speaks like this is uncropped so you know your whatever lens you're using falls off at a certain distance so you, you, yeah, you're very close. You're within feet. Um, right. And um, again, I, I really like the series. I think it's great. I also liked what um, Granville said about instead of large, small, mm-hmm. because small images make the viewer really get in there and take a look. Mm-hmm. Um, and so maybe it's a, a combination of the two where it's like one really big image mm-hmm. with a couple of smaller ones that make you you know, look deeper. Um, uh, yeah, small images are often uh, underrated, but they do pull the, the viewer in. I think that was kind of the idea with mm-hmm. the kind of walking sequence. And into the sequence, there's like these, not, because I felt like a little bit bigger for the portrait to kind of really see them. Mm-hmm. But then when you go to, I don't know, maybe the yellow, there's like a hand, there's sometimes a like there there are these fragments like i have i have a great portrait of a dog i have a great portrait of an umbrella i have a great portrait of um somebody holding a tooth um pick so there's all these little other moments that i actually Mm -hmm. have and haven't quite fit into you know how how it works because there's so many of them so i want to call out just one image um, and partly because I, I heard Ellen gasp when she saw it. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is like this is a work of art. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's like a book. I can see this on a book cover. I can see this is her with her lipstick, just perfect. <laughs> really fantastic. Yeah, I could see. Um some clothing company or somebody hiring you uh, off of these, <laughs> you should make sure you <laughs> keep them in a portfolio and, uh, you know, I don't know, some corporation or somebody's going to like this. Yeah. It's, not that they're not, they are art, but um, there's the, the theme is so cool. I mean, yeah, the theme is everyday water. people, which is the interesting thing that there truly are everyday people. And they, and just as you said, they are just stunningly beautiful. All of them. Um, you know, you, you've you've created something that has shown these people in such a beautiful light. Amazing. Yeah, there's such a quality just... about them. Um, I I really thought that everything was underwater when I first looked at mm. them. I thought you were doing underwater portraits, and then it wasn't until I saw what they were wearing and then the headphones. And I think you have so much to work with, and especially if you were saying you have a bunch of these, like when you sequence them and there's one in particular where there's um, a portrait and then a hand and then another portrait that gives it like a, a dynamic life quality about it. But even this hand here, and I, I love how you focus on different elements of a person too. And it's not just the eye or the lipstick that was so fascinating and captivating, but something as simple as a bent hand, you've made that really interesting and um I don't I would I don't know the best way to present this I could see it big and small um I can see these if you were to keep the color sequencing you can have a room with like projections and it would just be a mood room where you can have these people and you're kind of wafting through the realities of life then I can also see them small in a book too so it's wonderful work well, Nina, I, I I think you hear from the group of uh, smart people here that this is uh, this is something. This is Thank something. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I I I don't know. I'm pretty darn sure that this is the images I'm going to put on the on the thumbnail on YouTube because it's just I love it. <laughs> I keep coming back. I mean, to it's this. very it's just, joyous. It was a very joyous kind of body of work to go out and just kind of not even I, I didn't go far 
out of my house. And it was really, it was just people walking by. And so then, you know, I would go yeah. midtown to, but there wasn't people in suits or I have some suits. So then, you know, I tried to expand my, my, my repertoire of people. So it's like businessmen. And then I went to Chinatown. I mean, that's like the never ending catalog of people that, that can mm -hmm. be photographed. Yeah. Well, so I, I'm not, I, I don't know everything about the history of street photography, um, but I've never seen anything like this. I mean, this is, this is for, for me, a, a unique, I mean, it may not be unique in the world. Maybe people know the history of things, but I just, I've never seen interpretations like this um, captured on the street. And I mean, I, I, I looked mean, at as... work, right, more like painters. Like yeah. I looked at the work of Gerhard Richter. I don't know if, if you know, mm -hmm. anyone is mm -hmm. the one, but that kind wife. of, right. So, so that was very much an inspiration. And when I started photographing, like this, this is kind of what I looked at. But then, you know, you know, how do like not a canter, candor, candor, um, you know, how the coloring is not so much his harsh portraits, but he uses gels for that, you know, for the coloring. But this is kind of how this is on the street. Yeah, it's well, interesting that you reference painting because I've been thinking it, it feels very pictorialist, you know, yeah. so it, it had sort of that quality to it, you know, where well, I won't go into the whole history of photography, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it feels very pictorialist in that sense, um, and also very celebratory. Um, so, but well, like, Nita, you know, like like this oh. one, sorry, like you know the one with the baby's arm, where that is totally in focus, and the rest is just kind of, um, you know, I just love that photo. But then, sh you know, should that be the same gravity, like the same weight as you know, as a portrait? And maybe yes. Like I maybe. just love that chubby little baby arm coming from <laughs> where you just see the face so you know there's so many opportunities like, so many different ways of going about this nina that's uh oh. just lovely thank you really mm -hmm. fantastic people are uh, just beautiful mm -hmm. <laughs> um you know you when, when you said that when you said that you 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 know that people everybody was just beautiful i was like oh they are they, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, they are, you've just, but it felt wasn't... like such a positive, you know, instead of, you know, like nitpicking and, oh, I don't look good in a photo, like all of a sudden, even my daughters might like, you know, being photographed like that, <laughs> like anything I do. <laughs> well, I haven't taken, I've never taken a picture of anyone that you said, oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, my exactly. whole life. <laughs> well, I, it, it'll be fascinating and exciting to see what, uh, what comes of the project. I hope we helped you, you out. You. Um, Thank you. And really, really, it's uh, by this is this uh, this this whole thing having the critique uh, group here on the Crit House has been fantastic. We've seen such great work, and this is uh, this is right there. Um, Thank you, Nina. Um, thank, thank you, you to so much, uh, to Ellen and Granville and Janae and Nick. Um, next up, next week on the Crit House, we have Nick Gerben and his work up in Portland, Maine. Thank you all for watching the Crit House.